It's his love for you, not your love for him. Nothing you can do can separate you from his love. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you this morning. Amen. I didn't know if they were going to have to sing bass this morning when they first sang. But God has a way, doesn't he? Of touching and using. Thank you for letting the Lord use you. Going to the book of Psalms, the 137th chapter. Psalms 137 and 1. Now the book of Psalms, amen, is a book that you have to look at and understand it's a song book. And some think that David wrote the complete Psalms. David didn't write the complete Psalms. David wrote a large portion of the Psalms, but there are many Psalms or songs or hymns that were written by others. And sometimes they're placed in different spots, and then you go back and, uh, you know, David writes the following. So I don't want anyone to be confused this morning about Psalms 137. Because it's kind of placed there in the middle of all the Psalms, and after Psalms 137, you jump into Psalms, uh, you know, the Psalms of David, where he says, make a joyful noise. And so, um, yet at Psalms 137, it is almost a melancholy verse, a melancholy song. It's kind of a sad song. And the first verse reads, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We remembered Jerusalem. We remembered the holy place. Verse 2 says, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mercy. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Not a joyful psalms. Not a praise psalms. It's a song kind of a defeat. Kind of a song of, of you know, we're held captive. And, and uh, we, we just don't have a song in us. And, but we're not going to forget who we serve. But I take your attention back to verse 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. And just for a little while this morning on December 31st, 2017, as we get ready to launch into 2018 at Peace Tabernacle, I just want to make a proclamation. I will not hang my harp in the willows. I will not hang my harp in the willows. I'm not going to be defeated. The devil's not going to take my joy. Hallelujah. I will not hang my harp in the willows. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. This message has been burning within me for the last several weeks. And I ask you, Lord, to anoint these lips of clay as you have anointed my mind. Now I ask you, Lord Jesus, anoint our ears to hear. Bring understanding to every mind that we might grow closer to you in 2018. And I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. Grateful to be a part of Peace Tabernacle. Thankful, amen, that we are able today to, to come together and to praise 
the Lord. Grateful today that the Lord can even break out when individuals are getting prayed for. I love it. I love when God has a God moment. Amen. And yet, uh, amen, living for the Lord is something you have to do every day. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Too many times we base things on whether I'm happy or not happy. Amen. Whether or not I'm feeling, feeling good or not feeling good. But living for God is not about a feeling. Living for God is about a knowing. I'm going somewhere this morning. Amen. you got to understand that we are daily in spiritual warfare. And the spirit of oppression, amen, loves to come in and meddle in your families, in your home. Tries to meddle in the church. But honey, I ain't got time for that. I don't have time for drama. I ain't got time for the ups and downs. I've got a place I'm going to. I've got a destination I'm going to. I've got a promise I'm holding on to. So I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm not going to worry about those, amen, that have agendas other than God's agenda. But my mind is set on going to heaven. I refuse to let the devil steal my joy. I refuse to let the devil try to bring me down. Mama But I'm going to grab a hold of my heart. And I'm going to sing my praise to the Lord. I'm going to sing my praise to him who has blessed me above all others. Amen. You know I sing this song, I won't complain. And we've had good days and we've had bad days in 2017. There's days I wish we didn't have in 2017. But despite all of that, God has been good to you and I. He's been good to you and I. Amen. We talk about praise and worship a lot. I, I, it has to be a central theme. Amen. It has to be something that we do on a regular basis. The Lord loves our praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. We're not just, a, 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 you know, a fanatical people that uh, are just uh, trying to put on a show. Now, there may be a lot who are trying to put on a show, but I, I'm not trying to put on a show. I believe you ought to leave the lights on so you can see where you're going. Hey! I'm going to tell you something. I don't like lights being out in church because you have no idea where you're going if you're going to shout, if you're going to run. We still got to be apostolic in 2017, 2018. Uh, amen. We still got to be people that praise God, run the aisles, shout, uh, dance, uh, worship him with tears streaming down our face. Uh, it doesn't matter what the year is. Uh, it doesn't matter who we are. He's still the same. My, 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 my. And so these psalmists, these songs... Riders, they came from the temple and they had their instruments of worship. Uh, they were musical instruments. These harps were used in the temple, serviced by the Levites, uh, who seem to be the people who are speaking here. Uh, they took care of them. They were the praise leaders. They were the singers. They were the worshipers. And some would say that they took the harps and they they hung them because they didn't want them to be plundered. They didn't want the Babylonians to take their, their means of worship uh, and they hid them in hopes of returning to them one day. Because they had no heart to use them. You see, the devil likes nothing better than to overcome us. And not necessarily destroy us, but strip of us our spiritual strength to remove us from the place where the Lord's presence has been so strong around us and in us and get us used to being captivated by the things of the world. 
You see, many this morning are being held captive by the things of this world. And yet, if you were to ask them, they would laugh and say, not hardly. But every day, this world has captivated them. And now they are a slave to sin and not a servant unto the Lord. There's a reason why some folks can't come to church and praise God like they used to or like they want to. It's because they come captivated by the things of the world. They're captivated in their mind by all the lust thereof. They're captivated by all the things taking their attention away from God. But can I tell you this morning... You need to get a hold of your harp uh, and you need to let the devil know uh, I'm not going to hang up my harp of worship. Uh, I'm not going to hang up my harp of praise uh, in 2018. Uh, I may have been defeated in 2017. Uh, I may have come a long way in 2017, but I'm going to rise up. Uh, and in 2018, uh, I plan to serve the Lord with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. I plan on praising God with every fiber within me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you something. If we're going to see church growth, then the whole church has to get on board. Because he's watching us. He's saying, peace, tabernacle. How, how much do you really want to grow? Hush. How much do you really want to see this church grow? I'm sorry. Hey Amen. I don't want to try to compete. I don't believe church is a competition. I'm not trying to be the newest thing going down. Hey Amen. I'm not worried about building new buildings. I do plan to make what we have as beautiful and nice as possible. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, and I don't mind. I know what they mean when they come. Amen, that, that we're going to build, God's going to build a great church, he says, and we're, you know, I see walls coming out, that's all good. I love doing that kind of stuff. And so when they tell me that, I tell them this. I said, me and God's got this deal. I told the Lord this, you build the church, I'll build the buildings. Now see, that gets some people... Well, 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 what do you mean? I, the church is the body. Church is people. The Bible says that they added daily to the church as he saw fit. Right? But it was always based on the church itself. And so if the church is going to grow, we got to get on board. We can't just let one or two or ten, you know, do everything. Come on, come on, Amen. But our problem is, is that we want to look at the ten that are doing something and complain about them doing everything. And the thing is, those ten that are doing everything would wish somebody else would begin to get up and help them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can gripe about things all you want, but until you get yourself in the middle of it. Whoa, all right, all right, all right. We bogged down a little bit. That's all right. I know how to get Sally to pool. I know you pop that rain a little bit, pop that backside, and she'll move a little bit. Amen. But the truth of it is, amen. We can sit on our pews. Not lift our hands. Not open our voices. Not, you know, some of y'all haven't shouted in so long you forgot how to do it. Oh, I feel like getting out here in the midst of it. I just wallow right out in the middle of it. Some folks hadn't shouted. Oh, they've come to the altar and they've wept and cried and they boohooed and, and everybody's praying for them and that's right, that's good. But when's the last time you had a little victory in your life? You want to say victory is mine, but you don't have no more victory. Come on now. A person that's victorious is a shouter. A person that's a victorious person is a runner. A person that's victorious knows how to put the devil under his feet. Yes, sir. 
Some of y'all have that old mentality and you come in singing the old sad song. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. And you come into church with that mindset and you're looking at everybody shouting and jumping and worshiping and having a good time and you know what? You've got that mentality. You've let that spirit of oppression set on your shoulder. You've taken your harp and you've hung it in the willows. You get mad at anybody else that's got a little bit of joy. God's using them. God's doing something. Hey Amen. You know what? And they're too busy doing something for the Lord. They're not even paying attention to your mully grubs. But you got to realize, the enemy comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy, according to John 10.10. 10. Amen. Therefore, we have to be on guard with prayer and steadfastness, always looking to the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that the enemy of our soul does not want us to be right with the Lord. Hey, he doesn't care if you come to church. He doesn't care if you can quote the Bible cover to cover. He doesn't care if you speak in tongues. He doesn't care if you weep and shout. His objective is to steal your victory and to kill the spiritual man living within you and to destroy your witness among everybody. Can I say an encouraging word? This is really going to be an encouraging word. Some of y'all are going to think I'm preaching at you, stepping on your toes. But why don't you live it? I don't care what you post on Facebook. I, I don't care how much spiritual stuff you put out there. If you're not living it, honey, you're nothing more than a hypocrite. Hey, we got to live this every day of the week. We got to be sincere every day of the week. I got to be as holy today, tomorrow, as I am right now. I got to speak it tomorrow like I'm speaking it today. Some of us bring our harps in here and, and oh, I got the joy of the Lord. Victory is mine. And we walk out the door and we hang up our harp. Woo! But Brother Manuel, I don't want to hang up my harp when I walk out the door. I want to take my victory with me. I want to take my joy with me. I want to take my Holy Ghost with me. I don't want the enemy to destroy me or mine. He wants you to hang up your harp of praise. He wants you to stop living this truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And just give in and let him take dominion over your soul. Come on, Sister Wadi. I refuse to hang up my harp in the willows. I refuse to let the devils take my victory. I refuse to let the devil steal my joy. So I want to declare that 2018 be the year of taking back the promises of the Lord that the enemy has stolen from you. Come on, somebody. I want you to get mad at the devil. I want you to get upset with the devil. Huh? I want you to be like that little boy. Come here, Isaiah. My Lord, I love seeing an usher in the altar. Can't even take up the offering because he's trying to get a hold of God. I want you to be like that little boy that got bullied. Got pushed around, got shoved around, and got to, you know, he just, uh, you know, he just picked on every day and kicked around and just beat up over, you know. Sometimes you got to get tired of it. Sometimes, you know, you got to get tired of getting bullied. But that's like some of y'all today. Uh, in a minute, he's going to get the message. Some of y'all like that. The devil's just bullying you and beating you and intimidating you and getting in your mind and stealing your praise and pushing you around. But after a while, you got to get tired of it. After a while, you got to say, not anymore. After a while, you got to say, I'm tired of being pushed around. 
huh? Intimidated. Somebody getting in my face. Uh, after a while, you got to start pushing back. After a while, you got to put the devil on the run. After a while, you got to say, not in my house. Because he's not going to quit until you start pushing back. You got to get mad. You got to tell the devil, get in the corner and don't come out. And you say, we laugh a little bit, but that's how it is. The devil pushes you and pushes you, and he says, you're not going to pray. You're not going to praise. You're not going to live. I've got you. I'm intimidating you. I'll intimidate you with sickness. I'll intimidate you with this and that. But until you say, you know what, devil? I've got a harp. I've got a harp. And I'm going to sing my praises unto him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to praise him. Paul and Silas were beaten, bloody, and bruised. And yet in the midnight hour, they pulled out their Holy Ghost harps and began to praise the Lord. And when they did, something began to happen. I'm telling somebody, hey amen, you're bruised, cast into the inner prison of despair, but I challenge you to pull out your spiritual harps of praise and begin to magnify the Lord and let the enemy know in 2018, I'm going to get back what the Lord has promised me. I'm taking it all back. Hey amen, I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my peace back. I'm taking my home back. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage somebody. Don't hang up your harp. Don't hang up your praise. Hey Amen. You say, I got my praise. And I'm not going to let the devil take it from me. Hallelujah. 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 We have to put the failures of 2017 behind and look into 2018 with the understanding old things are passed away and yet all things are become new. Amen. You may have gotten relaxed in 2017. You may have gotten comfortable in 2017. You may have let a little bit of the world back into your spirit in 2017. But why don't you make up your mind? I'm going to put that stuff back under the blood of Jesus. I'm going to get a brand new anointing. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm trying to tell somebody it's time to get your joy back. It's time to get your burden back. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to get my burden back. I need to do something for the Lord in 2018. If I want the Lord to grow this church, I've got to do something in 2018 to help the Lord grow this church. Some of you used to teach Sunday school. You don't teach Sunday school anymore. You need to get your burden back. Some of you used to praise singing. You haven't praised singing in a long time. You need to get your burden back. Some of you used to teach Bible studies. You haven't taught Bible studies in a while. You need to get your burden back. Some of you used to pray a lot more than you're praying now. You need to get your burden back. That's your harp. You need to grab your harp off of the willows and say, Hey, I'm going to get my burden back. I'm going to get my praise back. I'm going to get my joy back. Hallelujah. 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 Give me just a few more minutes. There is a flower. It is called an Edelweiss. Now, 
Some of you hear that and you may have think of a song. You've ever seen the sound of music? There's a character there that sings Edelweiss. It's an Austrian song about his homeland. The Edelweiss is a flower. It is a small white flower. Has many meanings. But the Edelweiss doesn't grow in low-lying areas. It's like the sunflower. It's in that family, but it grows in the high mountain ranges. It grows in crevices of the rocks. And to get it, you have to get in some pretty perilous places. So it became a, a symbol signifying courage and a promise of fidelity from the courting male. Because of where it grew there in the Alps, the man would have to go to great lengths to retrieve it. So it was quite an honor if your bow came down and gave you, a, you know, a bouquet of Edelweisses. Because he says, I'm a courageous man. And I'm promising to be faithful to you. This same flower was used by the soldiers, especially in World War II. You would see it when an American soldier would come across a German soldier. And if they saw that Edelweiss, that small flower, had been put into the lapel, they knew that this man was one who had, who had courage and integrity. He was a soldier's soldier. Amen. He was willing to go to the heights to obtain that which was precious. I feel like today that there's some of us that can relate. Because to praise the Lord, to get back what the devil has stolen from you, some of us are going to have to get some courage. Huh? Some of us who've been defeated, who have felt rejected, I feel it in the Holy Ghost this morning. There are some who just simply are going through the motions. The enemy has put you through the ringer of life, and life hasn't been kind, and so in your spirit you're broken, and you're you know, you don't know what direction to go. And yet I can tell you if you'll be of good courage. That's what the angel told Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. And if you'll begin to start climbing up the rough side of the mountain. There's an Edelweiss. There's something precious. I'm, why are you climbing up that mountain? Don't you know that you're defeated? That's all right. I have courage. I have integrity. I want something precious. We got to go up the rough side of the mountain sometime. But see, what's up on the mountain is that eight of ice. That eight of ice of praise and worship. Hey, the devil's been trying to tell us, hey man, that you can't have praise anymore. That you can't worship the Lord anymore. That you can't be victorious in Him anymore. Climb up that mountain. I'm trying to tell somebody, pick yourself up and start climbing. I don't feel like praising praise him anyway i don't feel like dancing dance anyway i don't feel like running run anyway you say that's the flesh that's right it starts in the flesh but when i start in the flesh he fulfills it in the spirit i'm trying to give somebody the understanding if you'll just start to climb amen god's gonna give you the desire of your harp heart but you've got to pick up that harp of praise you got to pick up that harp of worship. You got to pick up what you laid down 
and you got to lay down what you picked up. Some of the greatest hindrances to our services is because we've laid down our harps. We've laid down our harps and we picked up other things. Hebrews 12 and 1 signifies this. Wherefore seeing we also are come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which just so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's time to lay aside things that we've allowed in our life. If you want to be victorious in the Lord, you've got to lay down some things. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Anything that is going to hinder me from getting from the Lord what I need from Him. Some would say, well, I'm changing churches then. But can I tell you the church isn't the problem? I've been in a lot of churches. I've been in dead churches. I've been in churches that are on fire. I thank God for Peace Tabernacle. You can go somewhere else if you want to, but the church isn't the problem. In fact, if you have a problem with the church, what you really have is a problem with self. And until you get self under the control of the Holy Ghost and get submitted to the will of the Lord, you will always have a problem with the church. And with the authority of the man of God. You'll always have it. It doesn't matter where you go. But if that's your baggage, you need to get your carcass to the altar. Come on now. There's too much self alive in you. Anytime I've had a problem with anything, really the problem has always been me. If I could just get myself in an altar and have a good praying through, then the problem I thought I had disappeared. What I'm talking about is getting rid of things uh, of this world that pull you down and hold you back uh, from getting a hold of God. And it isn't your spouse. Come on now. You got a problem with your spouse? Pray for him. You got a problem with your spouse? Get a hold of God for him. You got a problem with that one that you're sharing a home with? Fall back in love with him. But it isn't your spouse. It's the sin. So if there's sin in your house, you need to get rid of it. If there's things that are separating you from God, you need to get rid of it. Because those things take our attention off of living for the Lord. And those things causes you to put down your harp. And you got these things and you don't have a harp. You don't have a praise. You don't have a worship. Hey, man, you don't have a dance. And you get mad at people that have a dance. You know why they can dance? They ain't got the weight. You ever tried to dance with weights on? You ever tried to run with weights on? Yeah, come on, some of you. Athletics, athletes. When I when I was a young man, thought I was going to be be an athlete, and Dad said, "All right, well we got to get you training, son." And he went and found these ten pound weights that wrapped around your ankles. He said, "Let's go run. We got to get you in training. We got to get you in shape." And all of a sudden, you start running with ten pound weights on your legs. About a quarter of a mile, I was ready to quit. He said, let's go. We run a little bit more. I think I did about a mile that day with them weights on. About three or four days we did that. He trained me. He, and then in the fifth day, he said, all right, son. Today we're going to take the weights off. You're not going to run with the weights on. Do you know what? I did that mile like it was nothing. You know what the difference was? The weights. The weights weighed me down. 
the weights kept me from being able to move, move as fluid as I'd like to move. But when I removed the weights, amen, because I'd been training with the weights, amen, there was a difference. There was no hindrance. You see, some of y'all trying to live for God with hindrances in your life. You're trying to run with weights on your ankles. You're trying to, amen, shout, but there's so much oppression holding you down. And the Lord says, if they'll just pick up their harp and praise me. There is a right way to do things, and there's a wrong way to do things. And if you continually try to do things your way, which is usually the wrong way, then you all will end up being messed up. And so oftentimes, we live in a messed up state. I'm talking to saints of God this morning. I'm talking to everybody this morning. And when we try to do it our way, amen, we end up in a place that we didn't plan on being. We end up in a place where we've fallen into sin. We end up into a place where we're having to repent again of things that God's already forgiven us of. And, and then, you know, we get in this cycle where we live for God, then we sin, then we have to repent, and we never have true victory. And I know the Lord was hung up for our hang-ups, uh, but once you've been filled up, you ought to grow up. Can I say that again? Once you've been filled up, you ought to grow up. Once you've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and live for the Lord any time at all, you shouldn't have the hang-ups you used to have. You ought to not have the things that used to keep you down. You ought to have some victory in your life. You ought to be able to shout a little bit. You ought to come to church with the joy of the Lord. Amen. Waiting for God's Spirit to begin to move so that you can move with it. No! Oh! Come on now, I'm being your friend this morning. I'm being your pastor this morning. Hey Amen, I understand hang-ups when you're in the world. I understand hang-ups, but why keep them when you're in the church? Why keep them when you're living for God? Why keep them when you've been filled with His Spirit? Come on now, we gotta grow up. Realize this is my heart. This is my praise. I got to live for God. Nobody's stealing your praise. Nobody's stealing your victory. Only the devil. You let him in. Something wonderful happened in my house this week. I'll share it with you. My wife went to her office. And I was there with Jonathan and Jordan. And their rooms needed cleaning. I told them, get in there and clean your rooms. No playing, no electronics, no nothing to that room's clean. I went in my chair. I didn't lift one finger to help them. She'd come in, Dad, you want to come look at my room? I'd come in and look at the room. That needs to be picked up. That needs to be moved. Do it. Do it. Go. Make that bed. You're big enough. You're five. You're seven. I believe this, if they can operate an iPad, they can operate a vacuum. She can. She does a good job. They worked on them rooms for about an hour and a half. And them rooms got clean. Their mother came in. They showed them their, they were so proud. They showed them the room. Mom, the room's clean. What? Yeah. Go, Dad. That was Tuesday. Friday comes around. Mom goes to her office. The room needs to be clean. Y'all go clean your rooms. This time they know. But there's something funny that Jonathan said. He said, you know, it makes me happy to clean my room, Dad. I said, then why don't you do it more often? Why does Dad have to be the one to make you clean your room? I said, why don't you do it when your mom's here? He says, well, when mom's here, I just ask her to help me. Mindset. Mindset. 
mindset. Come on, I'm going somewhere with that. Mindset. The Lord's saying, I want some of you to learn how to clean your own room. The Lord's saying, some of you need to grow up and clean your own room. Some of you need to grow up and get your own praise on. Every time he turns around, it's like, will you help me clean this mess up, Lord? Will you help me? Oh, come on now. I'm preaching now. A while ago, I was preaching, but I'm preaching now. Lord, will you help me clean my room, Lord? I don't. Can you clean up this mess? Can you? No, the Lord said, why don't you clean up your own mess? Oh, come on. Some of y'all should be shouting with me. Some of y'all should be running the aisle with me this morning. But the truth is, is that when I get to a place of maturity, I realize I can't blame anybody else for my walk with the Lord. I can't blame mom and daddy for my walk with the Lord. Everybody wants to blame their mom and daddy for how they were raised. I'm going to tell you something. Hey Amen. They're just people who make mistakes, uh, who did things right or they did things wrong. But in the end, you're responsible for you. And so it's up to us to lay aside the things that are bothering us. It's up to us to put down the weights that are keeping us from the victory. Amen. It's up to us, amen, to make up in our mind, I'm going to remove those things that are hindering my walk with God. I'm going to put them on an altar, amen, that in 2018, amen, the things that caused me grief in 2017 will be gone. I don't know about you. I'm trying to come to a close. But in 2018, I want to lay down the baggage that has weighed me down and kept me from reaching my spiritual potential in the Lord. Ah. In a poetic verse, David writes, Arise and anoint thy shield. I'm praying some of you will arise up and begin to anoint your shield of faith with prayer and worship and praise. <laughs> Brother Enrique, it's time to go to war. It's time to get into spiritual warfare. Now, you know as a soldier, when you got ready to go to the battle, amen, they loaded you down with everything. I don't know how much the pack weighs. 75 pounds of, of stuff. Amen. You carry all that to you when you go to the battle. But once you get to the battle, what does the commanding soldier say? It's guns and ammo and nothing else. I wish somebody would hear me this morning. You're packing a lot of stuff with you. But right now it's time to get into spiritual warfare. It ain't time to carry a bunch of junk with you. It's time for the Word and the Spirit. Just the essentials. Just whatever it takes to win the battle. Don't take any extra baggage with you. I want you to know the Lord wants us to have a mighty move of the Spirit. But until you realize, if I don't lay this stuff down and pick up my harp... I'm never going to have what I need in the Lord. We pick up everything but our harp. I'm coming to a close. We pick up everything, amen, but what we need to be picking up. Our swords grow dull from lack of use. Rust begins to grow upon its metal. Our harps get out of tune. But if I have a declaration for 2018 for Peace Tabernacle, I thank God I'm finishing six years of pastoring. I love this church. Amen. God has given me the desire of my heart. But in my seventh year of pastoring, I plan it to be a year of jubilee. I plan to see greater moves of God. I plan to pray more than I have prayed. I plan, I plan to make sure, Lord, that if 2018, uh, amen, the seventh year of my pastor to Peace Tabernacle, that I do everything I can uh, to see a great spiritual atmosphere 
take place. So I encourage each of you, as Paul did in Ephesians, the 6th chapter and the 10th verse, finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I want to encourage somebody, put on the whole armor of God in this next year that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm trying to tell somebody, it's time to get a mindset. I'm not defeated. I'm not hanging up my harp. I'm not going down for the count. But I plan on this next year seeing God do greater things in my life and in my family than I ever have before. I'm coming to a close. Some of you have stopped fighting for your family. You've given up. Oh, you still pray. But it's just to make sure you mention their name. I have three older children. They're making decisions for themselves. And daddy's prayed, but daddy's fixing to start praying. There's fixing to be some prayer and fasting going on. Like there hasn't been prayer and fasting going on. Oh, Lord, I got to get out of the comfort zone. I got to get out of the comfort zone. <laughs> to whom much is given, much is required. And yet, uh, amen, we take it for granted so many times. Will you stand to your feet with me this morning? You see, there's a praise, as the songwriter wrote. There's a praise on the inside. That I can't keep to myself. A holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. So excuse me if I seem a little giddy or maybe even strange. Because praise is the way I say thank you, Jesus. I'm going to thank you for my children. I'm going to, I'm going to turn things off. I'm going to shut things out. Hey Amen. I'm going to let go of some baggage in my life that needs to be let go of. I'm going to grab a hold of my harp. I'm going to begin to praise God with everything on the inside of me. I'm going to cry out to the Lord with everything in me. You see, some of you today, you haven't cried out in a while. Hey Amen. You haven't worshipped in a while. I'm encouraging you. Would you come? Would you grab a hold of your harp and say, you know, Lord, in 2018, I'm going to let my harp be the praise of my life. I'm not going to let the baggage of yesterday hold me back to tomorrow. I'm letting the things of 2017 that hindered my growth with you, I'm laying it on the altar, and I'm giving everything to you, Jesus.